Hello everyone and welcome to Dixie Bell Paints YouTube channel. I'm Laura from Cherub's Chalks Interiors and today I'm going to show you how I transformed this piece which to be quite honest I thought was rather ugly into a boho style beautiful bit of loveliness. As you can see there's a fair bit of damage to the veneer on the top. Some of it's missing and a lot of it is bubbling so I'm going to have to take this off. There are quite a few ways to remove veneer. Some of these involve soaking it in water. However, this takes up time and I needed to get this project done quickly. So I just opted for the method using a chisel and a hammer and just removed the whole lot carefully to make sure I don't chip or damage any of the wood underneath. The next stage is to sand all over. I'm using a 120 grit on my electric sander, however you can just do this by hand. The idea is to create a key for the paint to adhere to, so you just need to scuff the surface up. I'm now going to clean with white lightning. I mix up the granules with water in a spray bottle and then spray it on and wipe off. You will then need to rinse the whole thing with water to remove any of the residue. Have you seen Dixie Belle's brand new Smooth Roller Kit? I am so excited to use this. I love to use a roller to achieve a smooth finish. And today I'm going to use it with some Quiet Cove silk paint. I'm basically going to be using this silk paint as a base coat to prime the piece. Obviously the silk has a built-in primer which includes some stain blocking qualities. So this base coat won't really be seen, however it will prime, stain block and when I do later on distress the final paintwork you will see peaks of this popping through. Okay, so now I'm going to use some Moonbeam Terra Clay paint and this actually is a second base coat and this is to get some texture and again this will be appearing through the distressed look of the final coat of paint. So I've actually left some of the Moonbeam out on a plastic tray to thicken up overnight and now I'm just cross hatching it all over for a real textured effect. And now I've let that fully dry, I've got some blues which I'm going to blend out on the front. So I'm starting with Galaxy, which is the darkest terra clay paint blue. First of all, I'm going to build up a solid panel of this at the bottom of the piece. Once I've got to around halfway up the front, I'm going to grab the next colour, which is Blue Moon. This is a slightly lighter shade of blue. So I'm going to paint this on above the Galaxy. So basically we've got two blocks of blue and then I'm going to blend it out. So I'm using a bell brush, which is quite a firm, natural bristle brush, and it's got quite a nice round shape to it as well. And I'm now going back and forth and also using some circular motions to blend out the line between the two blues. This is, of course, just the first coat. I always find it easier to blend smoother on the second coat, as you've got better coverage and it's easier to see how it's going to look once it's finished. So once I've got that first coat rough blend, I'm then going to carry on with the blue moon all the way up to the top of the piece. So now I've got two coats on and it's fully dry, so I'm coming back with a stencil and I'm going to stencil over the drawers. This is the Lotus Bloom stencil, which I've been desperate to try for so long, but never had the opportunity. So now I'm going to use it with some Marigold and my best dang brush. I'm just getting a tiny bit onto the brush and then I'm stippling that all over. So to continue the pattern, I simply lay the stencil over the last part of the design, matching it up and then continuing to apply the paint. So now I want to add some more colour to the stencil, so I've grabbed some cerulean blue and I'm just going to repeat the same process, however I'm going to randomly stipple it on so as not to cover up all of the marigold as I want all of the different colours to peek through. And then I'm going to do this again using some daffodil, which is a lovely vibrant yellow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to distress this back because I want it to have a really rustic boho vibe. And I also want to be able to see peaks of the moonbeam and the quiet cove, which were our two base colours. Now, 
I'm using another 120 grit sandpaper and I'm just roughly rubbing it over the areas that I want to distress. So I'm going to quickly wipe off any of that sanding dust and then it's time for the last part. So to finish off and to seal and protect all of that paintwork, I'm going to use some satin clear coat. I'm going to apply two thin coats of this, working in long smooth strokes to avoid any unnecessary brush strokes or streaks. Now it's time to photograph and Toby the dog did not want to move so I promised him a little bit of modelling time. <laughs> Okay, so I finally shifted him. So now we can have a proper look at these drawers. What do you think? I personally am in love with the detailing on that stencil. I don't know why it's taken me so long to use it, but I will definitely be using it again very soon. And here's a little closer look where you can see that distressing and blending in more detail. I hope that you've enjoyed joining us today on our latest tutorial and if you'd like to see more of our work you can go and find us at Cherubs Chalks Interiors on all of the social media platforms. For more videos like this be sure to subscribe, leave a comment and turn on your post notifications to be notified when we next post. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.